Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. We're visiting with Chris Prilliman. She's from New Destiny Treatment Center. Good morning. Good morning. So, Chris, where is New Destiny Treatment Center? And tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, New Destiny Treatment Center is in Clinton, Ohio. Uh, It's off 21, nice 13-acre campus uh, in a rural setting. We're on Taylor Road, um, and we are a Christian drug and alcohol rehab. So any chemical addiction that somebody suffers, we, we treat. And we have an inpatient program for men, 18 and over. Our inpatient program is nine months long. That is stellar. Um, and our outpatient program is for men and women, 18 and over. And uh, we offer mental health services to both inpatients and outpatients. Uh, We offer the gospel of Jesus Christ. We also offer MAT, medically assisted treatment. Uh, And the MAT is offered. It is not mandated. Mm -hmm. Um, And we do not indoctrinate, but we introduce Jesus. Mm -hmm. And not a Christian, not a problem. Come one, come all. We've had all kinds of folks come through our doors. Sure. Well, I think a person... It hits a point, particularly with addiction, that, and I don't, and I mean this in the best possible way, they're ready to try anything. Right. So they're open to the gospel at that point. If that is going to help, if Jesus is real and he's going to help me through this, I'm all ears. I think a person hits that point. But is that unusual? Is the faith component unusual in the treatment of people with drug and alcohol addiction? Do we have many of these types of centers locally, or is this kind of unique to you? We are unique in that we define the higher power. Um, So while there are spiritual programs, um, we we use the actual word Jesus. We say his name, Mm -hmm. and we talk about their father in heaven. Um, And I think that's what makes us different um, because we cannot let people define the God of the universe. We just can't. We have to introduce them to who he truly is and the fact that he loves them and, and he knows about them. You know, so many of our people come in and they're, they're just, at, they're empty. They're mm-hmm. empty. They're ashamed. They're tired. They're physically ill and they're spiritually depleted. And it is amazing to see what the Lord does in these people, I, I, I am truly blessed at the work mm-hmm. I do. Mm-hmm. Do you find people are admitting themselves, or is it normally a family member or a friend that brings them? There's a couple different ways mm-hmm. that they come. Um, some people come to get their families off their back. Some people come from the court system in lieu of completing like incarceration time. And some people just admit themselves because they don't know what else to do. Um, and I don't really know. You know, a lot of times when they're they're taking our treatment in lieu of incarceration, you know, um, maybe maybe they're at a at a deficit, if you will, because it's it wasn't their choice initially to come on their own. It was kind of the lesser of two evils. Well, I'll just finish my time in a treatment center, but. You know, the hound of heaven's out there looking for his souls, Mm -hmm. and he'll go anywhere. He'll even come to New Destiny Treatment (laughs) Center, and I'm so grateful for that. So while our hope is that people want to change, um, you know, anywhere you go, anywhere you go, you'll have people who just talk the talk, and, and we've seen that at times, but, you know, we see true life transformations. I don't, can I just share a quick please, story with please, you? Please, please do. Oh my gosh. So it was a week before Christmas and I was up at Summit Mall um, wrapping presents, trying to make a buck for our center, right? And people are going to donate. And I, man, I couldn't believe I signed up for this time slot. It was the Saturday before Christmas. No. I, you know, are you kidding me? <laughs> like I didn't have stuff to do. But I was setting up my table And a gentleman came up, and he had a little girl with him. She's probably about seven years old. And he said, are you with New Destiny Treatment Center? Now, I had only been there maybe a year, not even. And 
I said, yes, I, I'm, you know, here today to wrap presents. And he said, I was there. And I said, oh, did you work there? He was like, no, I was in your treatment program nine years ago. Wow. And I'm looking at him, and I'm looking at this little girl that he had obviously had after he got out of treatment. Mm. And my mind, I was like, wow, you're at the mall, Summit Mall, which is kind of expensive. And it's the week before Christmas with the little girl, so you're going to be spending some money today. Yes. And I just thought, oh, my gosh, he's he's okay. He really turned it around. He is okay. Yes. And his daughter was there. And she was holding his hand, and she was just looking up at him like any girl wants to look up at her father. And it just, that just, whoo, made my day. You know what I love about that too, Chris, is that it would have been easy for him to walk by and look and see you there and think to himself, oh, yeah, I remember when. Mm -hmm. But he took the time to come over and say to you, so what that must have meant to him in his life for him to open up that way. That man doesn't know what it meant to me to hear that. Yeah. He, that was something. So New Destiny is an on-site, a person, it's a live-in treatment center. People come and stay with you? Our mail program is. Our inpatient mail program, uh, we can house up to 50 men at any given time for nine months. So at any time you would come out to our center, you would meet somebody who was probably within their first week to month of treatment, and you would meet men getting ready to graduate. How did you come up with nine months? That was from our executive director, Dr. Bolus, who uh, started this program in 92. Um, and he really did. He, he is a Christian, a wonderful man, and he built on the rebirth. And so it is broken down into trimesters. Uh, our men, there's so much to be accomplished. They have group individual and family counseling. They have nutrition education. They have anger management. They have mm. addictive brain series training. Um, people who need GED readiness programs are given that so that they can leave the center with their GED. Um, we also have art and yoga available uh, voluntarily. They have an hour of exercise every day. They have nightly chapel. I mean, these guys are busy, and it's, it's all about healing. And I love, as you say, it's kind of about rebirth. It uh, that is. nine month period and come out a, a new person. And so many do. I uh, We have a guy that works at our center. And when I started there two years ago, just about, he was a client. And, and he was so quiet. He was so quiet. And I thought, he's never going to talk. He's never going to share. He's never going to open up. And a church called us and said, would you be willing to bring some of your guys, maybe have one of your guys do a testimony? And so I went to this particular man, and I said, I want you to give your testimony. He says, I don't, I don't do that. And I said, okay, but I would like it if you did. <laughs> and he did it, and he felt so good, and, and things started to really move for him. Wow. Now can I tell you, he has his own place. He works two jobs. He takes care of his son. He's, I just can't even, I cannot even tell you mm. what these stories do for me. Because, you know, sometimes they're sad stories. Sure. There are some sad ones. Um, and I know that the Lord knows all about it. Yes. And I don't know how and this tapestry works. Those stories aren't finished yet. That's We can keep that in mind as well, because you, there's a lot of seed planting oh, that goes on goodness. while they're at New Destiny. They're, they're so much so that one of our counselors went through treatment, left, went to college, got two degrees, and he is now one of our counselors. Wow. And what that must mean to someone who comes in and they're telling their story, maybe embarrassed, maybe ashamed, really down and out, and to have the counselor say to them, oh, I was right in your shoes. Exactly. I was right there. Exactly. That's got to be very comforting for someone who comes in. Oh, and just yeah. automatically you relate in a new way. You know, it's not unusual for people who truly find sustained recovery to want to do something to give back. Um, there are many people in this field uh, of counseling have have struggled with addiction themselves, uh, which I did not know. And that was kind of the beauty of my naivete when I started there. Um, 
I had no idea that so many of the people I worked with were recovering addicts. You know why? I'm going to say it. They didn't look like it. Mm-hmm. Well, shame. What does that mean? <laughs> what does, what a recovering, does a recovering addict look like? Do you know? Exactly. I'm, I'm just being honest. I just mm-hmm. want to be transparent because I think that discussions like that need to be had. Mm-hmm. Um, they put a face on it for you, and that face was your neighbor, your friend, your relative, the person that you pass on the street every day. It's they're real people yeah. with a problem. And they've overcome it, and that put that face on it. Well, and you know, I just think it's so beautiful. I really, I went home and I, I thought about that for a long time, and I thought, Lord, you delivered me. Mm-hmm. You know, what does a transformed sinner look like? Mm-hmm. You know, I guess it looks like me. It's got some wrinkles and some messy hair, but a real fun smile. You know, these these are just. I have learned so much, and I have grown so much, and there's so much more to be done yes. for me to learn at New Destiny, but there, there's nothing but air and opportunity there to mm-hmm. reach souls. We're all in that boat. Um, nine years. Let's go back to that statement. That gentleman was there, the, the gentleman you met at Christmas uh-huh. time nine years ago. That tells me that New Destiny has been around longer than I thought. Let's tell about the history a little bit. Well, uh, New Destiny, uh, formerly known as the Barberton Rescue Mission. So the, this uh, mission, if you will, has been around for over 50 years now. And it has evolved as the times have evolved. Um, I will tell you that now, although we do have a lot of heroin um, cases coming through our doors, alcohol still remains uh, almost pervasive throughout anybody's use. Uh, Rarely do you find someone, from what I understand, that is strictly heroin. You know, they don't have a beer or alcohol isn't tied into making the decision to use again, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, we have, the center has changed over the years. Uh, Some reasons have been financial. Uh, We take Medicaid only. We are not a private insurance. Mm. So all our funding comes from the services we provide medically and the counseling. So we receive no funding for beds. We receive no money for food or clothes. And we get guys in the program. Now, if you think about it, they come in July, and uh, they're down and out. They got their flip-flops and their shorts. Uh, Winter's coming, and we're northeast Ohio. So we have to find winter coats and boots and socks and shoes and toothbrushes, you name it. We provide everything well, for let's, these people. Well, uh, let's take care of that right now. So what kinds of things do you need? Do you have a place to store things for winter? Or, oh, are yes. you con- or do you do more seasonal and immediate need types of donations? Or Our website, uh, www.newdestinytreatmentcenter.com, has a whole list of items on there that uh, we need year-round. Um, really, what helps us is is purchasing power. Uh, we have a donate button there, but we can get deals um, with some of the businesses that we know. Uh, I know the art class that I run is wonderful, but it's not cheap. Um, you know, I'm looking for clay right now. If anybody out there has some clay, <laughs> and I need it fired, and I need it glazed. But it's just stuff like that that comes up. But truly, we do need winter gloves, winter hats. Um, And it's summer, but it took me forever to get boots together for these guys. One year, a church did boots for all of our guys. Oh, my. 50 pairs of boots. How cool. And and this one guy was waiting outside my truck when I brought him in, and and he was kind of shifting. He said, Miss Chris, I got to tell you something. I said, what's that? He goes, I'm kind of excited. (laughs) And I said, well, I'm glad to hear that. And he said... I've never had a pair of boots before. What? what? Now, how many pairs of boots have you had? Oh, golly. It's embarrassing. So, right? Yeah, even like right now at, at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's embarrassing. Yeah, we don't know. Other people's reality, it can be, they live with that every single day. Right. That is their reality. Right. That was his reality. How awesome. I'm so glad he got a pair of boots. I was too. Yes. But the next year... Mm-hmm. I couldn't get boots together till after Christmas. No, really. It was like pulling teeth. And you know, Susie, I get it. 
there are children out there born with birth defects. There, there is cancer. There is, you know, I have to find the people who are moved by my men, mm-hmm. and they're men. Mm-hmm. If a lot of times people say, "Geez, they're adult men. They choose to take drugs." Hey, how about the other choice? They're choosing to get better. I'm not asking you to go down and stick a needle in somebody's arm for them. I'm asking you to help me deliver the cross right to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good place to take a pause. We're going to listen to uh, these words from our sponsors, and we'll be back with Chris Perlman from New Destiny Treatment Center after these words. You're listening to Our Community. <laughs> 